Ladies and gentlemen, samples of AMD Zen 5 processors starting to leak online with benchmark results starting to pop up, courtesy of, well, companies starting to receive samples, do internal testing, and simply, in many cases, doing things such as forgetting to unplug Ethernet cables. So we actually have some confirmation concerning some aspects of Zen 5, which we'll go into in just a moment, and then I'll get into some exclusive information concerning N32. I have some uh, performance results to share with you, as well as some updates concerning the pricing and and also the release schedule. There's a lot to go through here, so of course we'll get to all of that after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So I want to give courtesy credit to, to BenchLeaks for doing just that, leaking a couple of different results of Zen 5 processors. Now these are 8 core 16 thread samples and they were basically being tested on a distributed cloud computing platform. We'll get more into the specifics in a moment but we are looking at a new CPU family ID here. It's being listed as 26. So basically Zen 5 is going to be 1AH and many elements of Zen 5 are very similar to Zen 4, especially for example for Ryzen, so the top end model for the 8950X for example is still going to be 16 cores, 32 threads, unfortunately those are not going to raise in terms of core counts. I'm hearing that IPC is going to be anything from uh, high teens, so 18-19% in terms of IPC up to around 25% of the most ambitious targets. Frankly, I'm being more skeptical and saying low 20 to more like high teens in terms of IPC gains. There's also going to be some clock frequency uh, performance uh, increases as well, but it's probably going to be very modest, maybe like 100, 200 megahertz on a higher end. I've covered this much more extensively in a recent video and some of the other architectural changes, but now we actually have some results which are starting to emerge. So the first result was uh, created on the 2nd of June, and we can see it's an authentic AMD engineering sample, 100, lots of zeros, 12, 90, uh, dash 11 n and again the family id is 26 model 64 stepping zero uh, 16 cores because again there is smt enabled here uh, with the coprocessor in other words the gpu being an rx 7900 with uh, 16 gigabytes of memory running on windows 11 and 32 gigabytes of memory and there was also another set of information we have here again this was created on the 2nd of june you can see that it's again an authentic amd engineering sample 100 lots of zeros 12 90 dash 11 again the same family id and again 16 cores with an amd radeon graphics with uh, 12 gigabytes of ram in this particular case and 32 gigabytes of memory and the cache here is being listed as 1024 on the subject of cache i think that overall the amount of cache across most of the chip will remain the same i think l1 however will see a small increase uh, l2 and l3 i believe the quantities will still be the same as the previous generation but now let's move on to n32 these of course will represent the mid-range rdna3 gpus from amd which have been well just absent of course amd have recently released the N33 based RX 7600 and have already launched N31, for example, the 7900 XTX. But what about the mid range? Well, as I just said, this will be taken care of by N32. So, from what I understand so far, according to the latest information I've had from a couple of different sources, the release plan so far seems to be some point in late Q3, possibly Q4 early. This is a shifting date and things could definitely change a little bit depending on what happens over the next couple of months basically. However, that seems to be the date that they are aiming for right now. As for the pricing, this is where things get a little disappointing, quite frankly. I had actually initially thought AMD would be going a much more aggressive strategy than what they seem to be. I asked my sources and initially it seemed that they were going to be pricing it 
let's say 50 to 100 US dollars cheaper than the RTX 4070, which I think would be an absolutely excellent deal. However, according to the latest information that I've been hearing from a couple of sources now, this does not seem to be what they're going to do. Now, prices can and will change last minute, but it seems that the same price as the RTX 4070 is what AMD will be going for with the MSRP of the N32 Halo, which let's just say is going to be the 7800 XT or whatever it ends up being called. Now, honestly, that is a little disappointing to me. I would love it to be a little bit cheaper, especially with all that's going on in the market. But obviously, AMD feels they can justify the price. So what about the performance then? Because that is obviously the all important question. Now I'm gonna basically round up and down the score. I'm not gonna say which way I'm doing it, but the score that I was told is uh, 19,000 points. Now this, however, is with a prototype board. So things can definitely change here. So we are looking at a result basically of uh, the GPU running at around 2600 megahertz and pulling about four, uh, sorry, sorry, I say 400, uh, 275 watts. However, it's very possible that this may be curtailed down to just 250 watts and they may be able to get basically things a little bit better, more optimized towards launch. And again, the drivers at this stage are not final, so things can definitely change. As of the time I'm recording this in general, though, I was told that the performance is basically very similar to the RT, uh, the performance S estimations excuse me are essentially considered to be very similar to that of the RTX 4070 give or take so five maybe ten percent in the best case scenarios or worst case scenarios obviously depending upon the application the game the game engine resolution and so on and so on so there you have it guys basically speaking the RTX 4070 is going to launch earlier it's going to be very interesting to see whether AMD actually do stick to that pricing strategy I just outlined I would really love for them to be a little cheaper um, there have been also some price cuts recently. We've seen the 7900 XTX as well as the XT being sold way cheaper than the MSRP launch price. In fact, videocards.com are running an article at the moment and the 7900 XT is available for 24% below the MSRP, making it 800 euros. This is in Germany. This is a reference design, so Obviously, it's not you know one of the uh, heavily overclocked factory designs. It's from XFX, and again, it's 800 uh, euros, which is not too bad at all, to be honest with you. Frankly, I think this price, if these cards, the 7900 XT, had launched at in the beginning, had been the MSRP, I think it would have been an absolute steal. I think, I think it would have just been an incredibly compelling deal, the 7900 XT at this price. Like, I say, even if it was 20% cheaper than what it had launched at, but obviously, just in the market that it's in right now, AMD felt that they could charge a premium. I will be very intrigued to see what both AMD and NVIDIA strategy is going into the next generation. At this point, to my understanding anyway, the refreshes for both nvidia and amd products are just not going to happen we're going to move basically straight from rtx 40 to rtx 50 and in amd's case of course rdna 3 to rdna 4. i will be very curious to see which issues both of these companies for example with nvidia the big criticism i think pretty much everyone has levied at nvidia is the amount of vram so it's going to be very interesting given the rumors at the moment that Blackwell, for example, will be utilizing GDR7 and higher capacity. It's going to be just very interesting to see whether they do actually end up cranking up the amount of VRAM. I think the mid-range for the next generation is also going to be extremely interesting given Intel will be, of course, releasing Battle Mage. From everything I've heard right now, Battle Mage is going to be roughly on par with the RTX 5060, possibly a little bit faster, maybe the 5070, given, again, it's basically on par with the RTX um, 4080. So, typically speaking, that's pretty much how the generation shift with NVIDIA. So it's ultimately going to be pricing, I think, for the next generation. With that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like and all of that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.